So this went from the TPP to the CPTPP, a tongue twister right there. And this was an agreement that the U.S. withdrew from. So how much progress is China making now? Well, we heard in February from Chinese officials that they were keen on focusing on informal talks, that in fact in February they had started informal talks to join the comprehensive and progressive Trans-Pacific Partnership. I'm not going to say that again. As you say, the acronym is a bit of a head twister. But they have started informal talks in February. Now we're hearing from officials in Australia, New Zealand and Malaysia that they have started technical talks. So that's an important move forward. They have started technical talks. And there is a view now from trade experts that Beijing is very serious about joining this trade pact. We don't know the timings yet, but they point to comments from Xi Jinping, the president himself as well, around his intent to get China on board with the CPT. PP. And it's consequential, of course, because this was originally designed to ensure there was a counterweight in this region in terms of trade versus China's growing clout in the region. It was designed by the U.S. in 2016. Then President Obama said it would be the U.S. and it should be the U.S. that is writing the rules of trade in Asia, not China. Of course, in 2017, President Trump pulled out of the then TPP. It's been redesigned at the lead of Japan into the CPTPP. Now China, again, signaling very strongly its intent to join us. I'm just very impressed by the fact that you managed to say it out in full as well as the abbreviation so smoothly, Tom. But, you know, you talk about the, the, the shadow of the US looming large, even though they're no longer part of these talks. What are some of the other potential sticking points that we're talking about? Absolutely. Well, if China joins up, they would have to take on board the full menu. They can't pick and choose parts of this trade deal. That's been very, made very clear uh, by members of this agreement. And a lot of those issues on the menu include agreements around things, for example, like employment and labour conditions, but also subsidies, state-owned enterprises, all issues on which many would say China is going to find very difficult to align its domestic policies with those of this trade deal. A couple of other areas as well, potential headwinds. Japan, for one, wants to see whether or not China will live up to the agreements that it made in the recently agreed RCEP, another trade deal in the region. That was signed off at the end of last year. So Japan wants to see whether or not China will commit and actually implement the agreements in that trade deal first. Japan also is pretty keen to get a trilateral free trade deal set up between China, South Korea and Japan, again, before bringing China on board. And China would need the backing of those key US allies, Australia, Canada and Japan, to join this trade deal. Of course, China has pretty strong and significant frictions, particularly with Australia and Canada, when it comes to uh, trade. The other sticking point, Taiwan has said that it has already had talks with every single member of this trade agreement. And of course, China would be dead opposed to Taiwan being part of this trade agreement for a, a very obvious reasons indeed. And then the other elephant in the room, as you've nodded to, is the United States and whether or not members of this trade deal would actually want to wait to see whether the US administration would want to rejoin before allowing China on board. So there's a very long way to go, a lot of stumbling blocks. But again, trade experts saying that all the signals suggest that Beijing at this point is taking this very seriously.